Welcome to Stage Mom Podcast, a podcast for breakthrough bands and artists. Today we have Alexa Lash. Alexa is a singer, songwriter, and a multi-instrumentalist from Miami, Florida. Her sound is a unique mix of pop, rock, and spoken word influences. I learned so much when I sat down with Alexa and was so impressed by her incredible songwriting skills. The songs she writes will bring you to tears or even laughter at times because you can actually feel the emotions and even the sarcasm sometimes that went into these songs. Don't miss her live either. Her voice is so strong that it demands your attention. Go check out her Instagram and music that she has out on all music platforms so you don't miss anything she has to come. I'm just living in reality Keep searching for this fantasy I cannot find I'm just living in reality And wishing this reality wasn't mine Okay, so we have Alexa Lash And so I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself Where you're from, what type of music you do And Sure. Um, my name is Alexa Lash. I'm from Miami, Florida. Um, I've been, what kind of music I do? It's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of, it's become a mix of poppy, folk, rock. It just, I have a lot of genres, but the thing that grounds most of the music is my voice because it's yes, very unique. It is. I, think. I love your voice. <laughs> Thank you. I've been listening to your music as I make dinner all week and everything just so that I can really feel, and I have a couple of favorite songs that we'll go over. Um, but in your description in, on Instagram, it says um, that you also do spoken word influences. Like, what what is that for uh, those of us that don't know? So, spoken word is kind of a type of active poetry. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's about a subject matter that's of some significance, shape, or form. But my starts were writing poetry. So, I, I never imagined that I'd ever be like actually a lyricist. Mm -hmm. It was something I talked about in like elementary school it's like a thing you want to do or dream of doing but you're never actually going to do that thing right so i wrote a lot of poetry middle school high school i won a contest like i love writing poetry so spoken word was just another it's just like a more free form form of that mm -hmm. i have one of my very best friends um her husband who wasn't her husband at the time we all worked together back 20 five years ago and he started um right side poetry where he would have like all the local poets come out and do that like they would do the stand-up type of thing and um yeah no it's it's definitely a talent because i definitely couldn't ever do it ever like i can't yeah so that's interesting um okay so what first got you into music um probably elementary school chorus mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so long ago at this point but i i always have loved singing mm -hmm. and I obviously, I, I exited away from it for a very long time, but I picked it up again in like middle school, high school. I started just writing little songs for fun. Okay. Again, nothing was ever going to come of it. Um, cut to like years later when I'm entering college, I would do open mic nights and acapella sing these like songs that I wrote. And mm -hmm. I'm actually singing one, one of them that I sing with my band <laughs> that I, that I wrote during that time period. Um, and then I had a friend who in high school, um, we wrote a song together for, for music class and, or not music class for economics. We wrote mm -hmm. a, a song about saving money <laughs> and like, so any chance I got to do something musical, I always did it, but right. never took it incredibly seriously. Um, I also was an avid karaoke -er, So Oh I, yeah. Yeah. I used to go to whiskey tango in, um, I think it was Hollandale or Hollywood in Hollywood, uh, -huh. uh with the live band karaoke and would love to go do that. Oh, I didn't even know they had a live band karaoke karaoke anywhere they did for a little while and then that moved uh the same band who used to be at whiskey tango moved to margaritaville and okay. had a live karaoke night there too i'm not sure if it's still active but it was for a bit oh i would love to go check something like that out it's super fun <laughs> i never even knew that and i used to be an avid karaoke -er because i would drink and think i could sing and so then i was one of those but um i never knew that that's i'm gonna look into that i never heard of that awesome so what was it that broke you away like between elementary and middle school what so, um, I just, I, when you're younger, you have to pick this career. I right. mean, I don't know if it's just like a United States thing, but they always train you that you're like, 
you do one thing and that's the thing that you're going to do and that's the thing you have to focus on having like all these different interests or multiple career choices is not always right. you know promoted in any way shape or form so i went to undergrad for for lit and i went to grad school and i did everything you're supposed to do um got a job that was incredibly unrelated <laughs> uh and then stuck with that for a while and I reconnected with an old friend, that friend I wrote the economic song with, okay. and it became this like beautiful hobby that brought me a lot of joy. Right. My, you know, having a nine to five job, it can get daunting, yeah. the commute, everything else, but I didn't have that spark. And I knew that that's something that was missing once that happened. Right. So you're super active um, with your shows and stuff. Do you have a full-time job now or is this what you do? Um, so I had a full-time job, which just turned into uh, a part-time schedule. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm head of a creative department at a branding company. Oh, like neat. I, I'm one of the leaders. There's, there's a couple of us, but, uh, yeah, I've been working there for almost nine years. Okay. And I've been doing music probably for five or six years out of the nine at this point. Right. And, uh, now everybody knows me as a musician. My yeah. CEO plays guitar and like has been really supportive <laughs> since I, you know, yeah. decided to make these changes in my life. And, um, but this is a job I would, I would come home exhausted, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. 8 30 to 5 30. And then I have practice from seven to 10 yeah. or recording from six to 10. <laughs> so yeah. I just didn't have a lot of nights off. Right. So, so, um, you mentioned your band. So is that the old fashioned stuff? Yeah. Okay. So it, is that strictly that? Is it Alexa Lash and the old fashions all the time, or do you ever just go out by yourself and and do gigs? I do solo gigs. Um, sometimes it's Alexa Lash duo or trio. Okay. They're always like members of the old fashions now. Okay. Like I, don't, it's just it's my favorite drink at Bar Nancy. It's my favorite whiskey beverage. <laughs> that was my question. I was gonna ask where that. Came. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and like it's it just pays homage to to Bar Nancy specifically because. During the pandemic, which I know a lot of people don't want to talk about it anymore, but it really was where I started out all of this kind of restart, I guess a refresh, because my I had a band called November May uh, with my friends, and then that band broke up, and then we got back together, and it was Alexa Lash, like, basically under my name, and then pandemic struck, <laughs> and... I just couldn't be without music. Right. I was living by myself for like five months. I was like, I got to do something with this yeah. time. So I dressed up as Elsa and sang oh. for my friend's kids. <laughs> like, oh, wow. I volunteer actively for musicians on call. I'm finally coming back into it. Uh, I've been on a little bit of a break from that, but I love volunteering. And, um, and then I wrote a bunch of music. So I kind of honed in my skills during that time period and then as soon as things started to open up even a little bit I had somebody visit me from out of town um didn't know where to take them because I hadn't left my house in five or six months and uh took them to Bar Nancy because I worked there one night a week uh -huh. and my boss was like you should totally come in and play if you want he can play whatever you want to do uh people like were there but weren't and mm -hmm. then people heard about it and I started playing randomly every Sunday just to practice right and then all of a sudden the room was kind of like half full and we had to close the door because like, you know, you couldn't, you had a capacity. Limit. Right. Like, Unfortunately. It was weird. I felt like, like a mini celebrity during that period of time. That's like awesome. people came from Port Lauderdale to come see me play. Cause they That's just heard awesome. there was music. And then, um, my boss was like, Alexa, I'm gonna have to take away your night unless you get a band together. <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. I'm going to work on that. And then lo and behold, there is the old fashions. <laughs> awesome. I've never drank an old fashioned. Really? Yeah. What's what is in it, by the way? Oh, it's um, it's well, it's whiskey. Okay. I prefer bourbon, but you could use rye, or they have various other alcohols. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, and then it's a simple syrup, Angostura bitters, orange bitters, and an orange slice. Okay. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. I used they, to drink they make it all always. the time. Oh, so, really? Yeah. <laughs> bourbon and ginger ale. That was my drink for t two years. Oh, well, so then, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So your songwriting process. Describe that to me. Uh, that's a great question. The songwriting process specifically, <laughs> it changes. Um, okay. It's changed over the course of time because I, I, for a long time, I didn't play an instrument. Okay. And that changes the songwriting process. I was writing melodies in my head and then would record them on my phone, uh, bring them back to the band or whatever. When I started learning chords, 
I started to learn a chord, I would like add it to the chords I already knew and then create a new song. Right. And so then I would finally like get that chord down to a science. And then for a little while, that's how I was doing it. When I started playing piano, uh, that also was chord learning and everything else. It changes the vibe like that. Piano is very much either you go jazzy or you go like super pop. Right. You know, like, right. and so a lot of the songs I wrote on piano felt very poppy in comparison to what I was writing right. on guitar versus what I was writing when I was doing more the acapella spoken word style. Right. Okay. Which is without instrumentation. Right. And then now I'm kind of trying to marry them, the things I'm learning, trying to change up, you know, strumming patterns and, and change that. But sometimes it starts with a lyric that's in my head. Sometimes it starts with a melody. Sometimes it's me messing around trying to learn a chord and then something sounds cool and I record it and it turns into something else. Or sometimes I work with somebody else mm -hmm. and we come up with the melody together and then right. it just kind of flows. Right. So song price, basically songwriting process changes always right. all the time. What do you find inspires you the most to write a song? Uh, it used to be heartbreak. That's what everybody <laughs> says. Uh, but they're the best songs. They really are. I mean, I use it as an outlet for how I'm feeling at any given time. I mean, I literally wrote uh, a song about something that had happened to me at work. Like, I got upset about something and right. then wrote a song about it um, called Burden. And then um, that's a piano song, but I, I can't wait to bring that out again. But... Um, I also write about like relationships in general, like friendships that don't go well or how I'm feeling in a given moment or other people's stories. Somebody tells me something that happened. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Like what, what advice would I give them? Right. Um, so it kind of just depends on now. I think it's more like the learning process may inspire new lyrics or somebody telling me they want this song to be about something specific. Right. Uh, and that, that'll inspire me. I wrote a song because somebody said everybody has a Sunday song, and I wanted to write a Sunday song. That happened during quarantine. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I love the song Sunrise, that whole vibe. Thank you. I was like, but there is a song that literally, like, I, the song I do. For my I, brothers. <laughs> what is that? For, I wrote that for my brothers. They were getting oh. married. And um, my my brother is is Colombian. My step -mom, my stepmom's Colombian, so he's half Colombian. And um, his husband he met in Colombia. Right. And that song story specifically, I was having a really stressful week at work that week. Mm -hmm. And um, I made I I was like I'm I'm writing a song for their wedding. Like that is I had so it in my sweet. head. But I was so stressed. Right. Like I, I was like, I don't know how the heck I'm gonna do this. So I sat down at the piano, and I forced myself to write this thing. And I had help from my stepmom with translation stuff because my mm -hmm. Spanish is like, it's okay, but it I need it some needs grammatical assistance mm -hmm. every now and then. And um, yeah, I wrote this song in like a few hours. Called up the guy who records me for all my other stuff, and right. I was like, "Hey, I want to record this for them as a gift." I'm going to perform it, but I want them to have this like keepsake. Um, and it came out so well, the first like draft of it that, um, I asked my brother's permission to release it, had them do the cover art and then it got released. <laughs> I'll tell you, like, I don't speak Spanish at all, but I literally dropped a tear when I was listening to the song. Cause I could just feel like everything that went into that song. Like, and I knew it had to be a love song. But I just felt it. It was, like, so beautiful. So what yeah. are, like, could you translate it for me to understand sure. what you were saying? Because I just thought it was beautiful, and I didn't even understand what was being said. Um, let me see if I can remember the lyrics all the time. <laughs> it's like, uh, when I think about life, cuando pienso que la vida puede ser mejor. When I think about life, you make it better. Um, I would have to see it. <laughs> I don't remember my lyrics. Right. Cuando pienso que la vida puede ser mejor, tú me das alegría. You bring me joy. Um, something, something about thinking about it. And then, um, uh, oh my gosh, do you do you mind if I like sing it? Is no, I would love. Do you want you want your guitar? Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that you okay? just play that for us? Okay. I'll probably have messed. And then I can I can translate it better. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely Sorry. Try. No, don't no. So I um I, and I need I needed the song to be in two languages. That was a very specific uh, desire of mine. Um, and like my Spanish is. Did you release yes. it? Oh, I love your guitar. Yeah, I did. Oh, I think I just 
I got my daughter the same guitar, but in green, but not the Malibu. I don't think it was the other one. Oh, I love the Malibu. It may be a god of Malibu. It's been driving me nuts now. Um, I'm not like the most solid. I still, I'm taking guitar lessons too, so everything is like constantly trying to improve. Um. No pienso que la vida puede ser mejor. Your heart is is uh, is dance, and my heart is music. Like there's like a bunch of like little things in there, um, and that will you know will face this life hand in hand together. Uh, so beautiful. So, and then in the chorus, it's like um, uh, it's, uh, there's a million ways to say that I love you, but I should not do. I do, my love. No, I do. Like oh. when you say I do when you're getting married, right. that's the words. Oh, si quiero. So, yeah. So that's I'm um. A tear. Okay. <laughs> Thank it's you. So pretty. I'm sorry. I was just like, it's like I know the lyrics and I've sang them so many times, but translating them, it's like it's yeah. come so naturally because I know what they mean in my head. But then right. it's like, what did the what did I say? <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. I this I was really proud of that song. I'm really glad you asked about Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And it's the story of its beautiful. its origin, like, I recorded that thing the next day at the studio. That's I was awesome. in there at, like, 10 o'clock at night after a band practice with Fernie Coipel at uh, the shack in Hialeah. So were there any dry eyes at the wedding when you performed it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I can't imagine there would be. Well, it's also, like, a testament to a lot of my progress, not just because of the songwriting and being able to turn it around, but I finally got to write something for my, well, I've, I've written something for my family before, but writing something that was incredibly personal to mm -hmm. them and that they could hear. Right. Um, but also the fact that I was playing piano <laughs> on any recording <laughs> because I'd only gotten the piano in November of 2021 wow. or something. And when was the wedding? Uh, that's a great question. I should know when my brothers got married. Yeah. I barely or maybe it was 2020. I, I've only been playing piano a little over a year. Okay. Whatever year that is. I don't know what year it is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> is it 2022? 2022. Yeah. So maybe it was 20, November of 2020. Oh, my God. Oh, but speaking of years, totally off topic. <laughs> my daughter was drinking a Celsius this morning, and that expired that? in 2308. I'm sorry, what? I'm going to show it to you. Were you <laughs> I was like, you got to take a picture of this. That is something I definitely don't want in my body. If it has that long of a shelf life. <laughs> no, it's like Twinkies. Wait, is that just a, it's an urban legend, isn't is it? Is it? I don't know. A myth. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Something about, like, end dates of things. Some, I just actually was talking to someone two days ago about the shelf life of gummy bears. Oh, God. They don't I go love bad. gummy bears. Oh, no. They don't, get, they don't go bad as long as you store them properly. Like, you can eat one that's super old. <laughs> I, I have this thing. My husband says it's like a rule I have that anytime I open the refrigerator, I have to throw something out because I'm so neurotic <laughs> about it. And he'll go to get it. He'll be like, hey, where's that cheese at that? Uh, what? The cheese that was in there for 36 hours? It's in the garbage. He's like, God, you guys stop doing that. But yeah. It's... Oh, I don't know the shelf life of anything. And I'm terrible cook, terrible chef. My fridge is usually empty. <laughs> um, I'm a disaster outside of work. <laughs> So, okay, so what's your favorite song that you have written so far? That's a great question, too. Um, I like a lot of them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, She's Gonna Be Fine is one of my favorites to sing. Okay. But that's like a, that's like a belter, you know, like I'm, I get really into that. Um, but probably one of my favorite songs that I've written and I'm very proud of is uh, Baked Apples, because I wrote that about my grandmother. Okay, you want to play it for us? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay. Mm. 
My my grandmother raised me till I was nine. So okay. Just, uh, when she passed away, it was very hard for me. Am I gonna cry again? Mm-hmm. Not, I'm so, <laughs> maybe I should pick a different song. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I'm like about to sing I do. I'm like, that's not it. Everything starts with a C. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay, I got it. I got it. Tears, but allow me to cry, and they come to believe I'll see. It's apples and elephants, hands on my shoulders, stood on my toes, so you'd reach me. Wish you were here now that I am much older, so much I know. myself from crying when I sing that now because it's like if not I won't be able to sing <laughs> basically but um I yeah. think of her every time I sing it like when I do that look to the ceiling line I try to always look to the ceiling because you know she she didn't get to see me do any of this right and so for me it's I hope she's proud oh god I'm gonna start crying I know I can't even comment on it it's like does this happen a lot sure she is. <laughs> I only cried once before okay <laughs> So is that why you have an elephant? I saw you had an elephant tattoo on your back shoulder. I do. It's it's from my grandmother. She yep. collected elephants on all her travels. Um, I used to get her one every like anytime I went somewhere, I would get someone in it, or get one, and it would remind me of it. And why I actually got the tattoo um, is because you know as I moved around from college and elsewhere, when she passed away, all the elephants got split across family members. Okay. And they would break like some mover would just drop the box and i would open it and i i i cried so much like i was like why am i crying over this thing that broke you know like my dad's like alexa like chill like it's a thing you know and i was like i need to put something permanently on my body because 
I would just get devastated when something would break. I, I'm way too nostalgic. I have so much of her stuff that got given to me. Yeah. And parting with things is hard for me when things get broken or, or messed up. And yeah. I react in ways some people would consider not normal, <laughs> I guess. I'm a little bit too emotionally attached to some of these things. And I know that. Um, but it's hard. I mean, she was like my mom. Yeah. I, I have a mom, but she was... Yeah, she made she, formative years. She taught me how to read. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, I get it. I um, I, I know it sounds crazy. So, I, I'm I'm exactly like you. I, my father passed away. It'll be two years. Um, and it was almost like I kind of just like anytime it was talked about, it was like, oh, he's just at his house, you know. So I kind of just tucked it away. So I went to the dentist last month, and I had oh my god, my tooth. It was awful. So I um, went to the dentist, and the ladies, the dentist said that I would have to have my tooth pulled, and it was where I had a cap, and it was a gold cap. And she's, I was, that's one of my biggest fears, first of all, is the tooth getting pulled. But then I just, once she said, okay, I got the cap out, I'll probably start crying, telling the stupid story about a freaking cap of my tooth. I started to burst into tears, and I'm like, oh my God, because all I heard about when I was a little girl was like, with my parents talking, my dad like, Okay, well, I'm going to work overtime because Ken Kenny's got to get that gold cap. So I'm like, oh, my God, my dad worked so hard for that. So I, like, cried for, like, a week. And so my sisters were like, I think it's because you never really accepted it. And it all hit you when you're in the dentist chair there looking like a fool <laughs> crying over a cap. Yeah. And it was like, so when you were saying that, I totally understand that. So I was like, my sister said, you should, like, get the, the gold cap made into, like, a charm of some sort. So, yeah, so repurposing is but, a wonderful thing yeah. that you can do. Yeah, no, I to so that's why it's like, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh my God, I totally know what she feels. <laughs> People think we're crazy. <laughs> I just stop. you know, I've, I've forgiven myself a lot. I've, I've talked to people. I've, I've done a lot of work on myself over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Like I was mega anxiety central. I still am. I have a song called anxiety. I wrote mm -hmm. it like quarantine was hard. Um, but I've forgiven myself for a lot, and I've tried to work on being more empathetic, more understanding, to listen more instead of, you know, that whole listening to listen versus listening to respond, because um, everybody's always got the thing that they want to say. And I still make mistakes, yeah. but I forgive myself because I'm human, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make mistakes. Yeah. And that's it. And when it comes to nostalgia, it's a huge piece of who I am as a person. Yeah. Whether it has to do with a star sign or something else, I don't know, but I'm very nostalgic. And but that's, that's why you're such me. a good songwriter too. <laughs> that's it goes hand in hand. It's 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 funny though because I write a lot about like heartbreak and love, but the song isn't for the other person. Right. It never is. Mm -hmm. The song is for me to heal. Yeah. And it's just a lot of people connect with it. I found out somebody cheated on their husband just because of my song "Guilty." That was an interesting confession. <laughs> what? Yeah. I have a song about cheating uh -huh. because, like, I wrote it from the perspective of, like, the woman talking to the other woman kind of thing or okay. the other woman talking to the girlfriend person. Um, uh, yeah, the song's called Guilty, and um, someone heard it, and they told me they connected with it. And out of all the songs I thought anybody would ever connect with or want to tell me about, right. I was just surprised on that one. <laughs> no, but but that's, people tell me they connect with it. That's awesome, music. though. I'm grateful. I'm yeah. so grateful. I've heard nothing but nice things this past week, and I'm just, I'm on a, I'm on a loving high. Like, I'm just, like, I, the message I woke up to this morning was from Katie from Bar Nancy, and she said some very nice things, and I was crying this morning, so. Oh, then you come here, cry more. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just an emotional day. I think I'm just tired, so it's, like, pouring out of me. I can't hold it in. <laughs> did you have a show last night? I did. Yeah. I did. I say Bar Nancy a lot. I do perform other places now. Um, in fact, Bar Nancy's like, Alexa, you should probably start playing, you know, just go. <laughs> uh, we want to see you grow. We want to see you at bigger venues. And I'm like, I respect that. Well, um, you're definitely growing. You just went to Alaska, right? For the Alaska Folk Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. How'd you get that? So my best friend, Dita Davey, who's an artist uh, from, uh, she, her daughter actually lives here right now, um, mm -hmm. who's going to be going to Vanderbilt. I don't know. Shout out to, to Anjali. <laughs> Congratulations. Sorry, she's such a proud mom, like my friend Dita. Anyway, my best friend, she lives in uh, Juneau, uh -huh. uh, Alaska, and she's been, during during quarantine and everything else, we would talk every day on FaceTime. I would be cooking, we would be cooking together, we'd be doing all these things, and we still talk, like, pretty much every day, uh -huh. even now. Right. Um, 
But she would say, oh, you got to come here. You got to come here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Dita. Like, eventually I'll, I'll get there. I promise. <laughs> and then at some point I, I went on a sabbatical from my full time job uh, for two months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Dita, I'm coming to Alaska. I don't know what she's like. You should come for Folk Fest. She always said it. And um, I applied to play Folk Fest and got it. But she had already helped me get a couple other gigs while I was going to be there. Right. So I was there for like eight days ish. Um, made some really good friends, have a new honorary member of the old fashions oh, yeah. who played with me while I was there, That's who helped awesome. me with all my equipment. His name's Jacob. Um, shout out to Jacob as well. Um, Alaska was life changing for so many reasons, not just because it's Alaska, right. but because it showed me I could work with other people and not feel scared or anxious. Like I used to have made mega control issues with that, mm -hmm. um, and be really self doubtful. Um, but also because it gave me the wiggle room to like go somewhere else and play music, right. like new crowd, new audience yeah. that I could actually travel and people would like my stuff else. Right. I wasn't True. stuck. Yeah. I get anxious when I'm stuck. And if I felt like I was stuck in Miami, I was going to, I just feel free right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm, I feel like I came back from Juno, a different person. And I know as cliche as that sounds, but it, I feel it. I'm not like as depressed. I'm not all these things. And I right. just want to make music and. That's make people awesome. happy. <laughs> that's awesome. And I saw, I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. She got to play there. That was yeah. It was, it was my first, you know, cause other, other people have festivals, yeah. you know, like they call it a festival, right. but it's not, I was in a program. It was very exciting. I played for a bunch of people. People recognized me in thrift stores and stuff. They heard my name on the radio. I was like, wow, this was very cool. <laughs> no wonder you're on this, like happy high. This week. It's like, <laughs> well, I was also on another podcast that was my, um, it was the Tony Kornheiser show, okay. which is, I guess, this big guy mm -hmm. for ESPN. Right. Um, he said some nice things on his podcast, but the best part about it is that I did not know my aunt was a religious listener of this podcast. Oh, And no. I texted other family members and just, like, was going to text her next. Right. But I forgot because I was working. And she calls me out of the blue, and she's like, Alexa, I just had the weirdest experience. I just heard your name out of Tony Kornheiser's mouth. <laughs> and I had to double check, and I replayed it a couple times. And I realized it was you. That's I just don't funny. think you understand what I just went through. That is funny. It was crazy. I had a couple of people message me on LinkedIn, like old coworkers who uh -huh. heard me on that show too. Right. And it was just, I've been on it. I've been having a good week. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. So like being, you know, going and traveling to Alaska, everything. Have you come into contact with a musician that gave you some good advice that you feel like you're going to take with you? Um... It's not so much the advice anyone gave me, so much as the general just experience of being there. Um, Alaska just, it showed me I could play with other people. It showed me I can do things on my own. I played a couple, I played several gigs there by myself at a restaurant. Um, I'm self-conscious all the time. I have, I think other musicians have shared it with me, but imposter syndrome, where you feel like you're not supposed to actually be doing it. Like really? constant self-doubt. Yeah, we, I think a lot of us go through that where we don't feel confident in ourselves. Right. It may seem like I'm less like, likely to be like that, but very much self-doubting wow. myself all the time. And Alaska taught me to be more understanding. Nobody said anything in particular, but the kindness factor, right. being recognized at different places, being told that I did a great job or welcome back anytime. Um, having a fellow musician hearing my music for the first time mm -hmm. and saying like, I really like this and smiling through the process of rehearsal. Right. Like those things are what motivate me to keep wanting to do this. Right. I think it's really what Katie said this morning and she's not a musician, but what she said this morning, um, may I read it to you? Is of that course. Okay? Yes. Right. So we're <laughs> taking out my phone. I talk a lot. I apologize. I talk a lot too. Apologies. Hey, that's what we're here for. Ah, uh, that's true. Um, Sorry, Katie, if you didn't want this to get out, <laughs> but <laughs> she said, good morning. Wanted to tell you again how amazing you were last night. I haven't seen you perform in a while, and I'm blown away by your growth and talent. I had so much fun watching you and knowing the words to your songs. I woke up with MIA in my head. Love you, lady. Aww. So that's what I woke up to this morning. That's so nice. She was talking to me last night about how much I've changed even in the last six mm -hmm. months, and having other people watch my progression. Right. I feel like a, like a toddler who just learned to walk or right. something. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's incredible. Like I see it in so many different bands, like the evolution from where they started to where they are now. I'm like blown away. Like it's amazing. 
And you have, I think, uh, I've seen several of your episodes, or, you know, looked at who the musicians mm-hmm. and stuff. You had a lot of, like, I, I feel old in comparison. I'm like, a lot of these people have such long ways ahead of them. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I started so late, because I'm in my 30s. So, I'm like, yeah. comparatively to some of the ones who are just, like, in college still. Yeah. And I've had some in high school still. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'm jealous of that, because I feel like, like, I have to balance work and everything else yeah. that goes along with it. I'm mm-hmm. prioritizing music because it means so much to right. me. Like, it's a challenge. Like, my drummer has a job at the airport. Like, my bassist has a job at a, a recording studio. My um, my lead guitarists switch off because one of them is in other projects. The other one's in other projects. They all both work jobs. One works at School of Rock. Mm-hmm. One's this, one's that. And it's just, it's hard to get everybody together on a regular right. basis. It is. I envy these, like, college kids who this is their thing that they do on yeah. the side and can, like, meet up and don't need to work for yeah. a little while. Like, I yeah. <laughs> I miss that about UCF. <laughs> like, yeah. I wish I had been doing this yeah. sooner, but I guess I the songs agree. would be completely different. So. They would be different. And it's funny that you say that because my daughter, like I said, when you got here, she's she started out playing the drums. Yeah. She's an incredible drummer. If you come out to the mini fest, she will be playing drums for Luna Scar. Oh, nice. Um, but she's also started her solo project thing. Um, so she'll be performing and playing guitar. But she was in a very successful local band here. And um, we kept telling them they were together for four years. My daughter's 19 now. They were together since they were young. And for at that age, for them to be together for as long as they were, the only reason that they're not together now is because the bassist is at Berkeley now. But it was like, to get them to practice, it's like, you have no idea you've made. You have a crowd that loves you guys. You have people begging you to play there. And here you are acting like taking it for granted. But then I think about it now and I see where she is now. And it's like, it wasn't going to last anyhow. She's so different now than what she was in that band. So it all happens for a reason. And your voice is like, unbelievable so i mean you. you're definitely regardless of when you started i, I it changed it changed it's a just... lot my voice changed a lot and it's because of the last two years yeah i practice every day yeah i'm taking piano lessons now and yeah what other mu- you play the guitar the piano do you play any other instruments the ukulele is what i started awesome. on um not the best at it i'm not the best at anything i feel like a jack like a jill of all trades with the, <laughs> with the instruments now but i'm, I'm learning right but again, I started late, so I'm, yeah. I'm You're really just, proud I of myself. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. My goal for my next birthday, which is in November, is to play one lead solo, even if it's for five seconds, right, right. to do something lead-like right. with the guitar. Um, that's my that's my new uh, goal. Right. But that's how guitar started. I For one of my birthdays, I was like, I'm playing guitar on stage uh-huh. once. Right. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> so are you a Sagittarius? I am not. I'm oh, a Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter's Scorpio. Beginning of November then? Uh the eleventh. Yeah, my daughter's the fifth. I'm the twenty ninth. Nice. So I'm a Sag, she's a Scorpio. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so. Star signs come up a lot. I had someone who just hired me for a gig who was like, What's your star sign? And I was like, I thought this was a strange question <laughs> to be asked to be booked for a performance. I was like, if I, if I say Virgo, is she not gonna hire me? <laughs> <laughs> I think because because in, even in the messages, I guess I came off as very process oriented. So that's why I made the joke. But with her, but mm-hmm. I was honored that I was recommended for this thing. I just thought it, uh, she she's just very interested in star signs. And I thought that was interesting. Right. I like it because it's storytelling. Yeah, it is. So. It is. It really is. Scorpio I, song. I got to write one. Yes. <laughs> Do that. Do that. So um, what is it that you feel makes you so passionate about the music now? Um, when my band broke up, uh, I was, I got very depressed very fast and realized that music was the thing that brought me joy. Right. And any chance there was where it might be gone, I would get so anxious. I I was like, I can't, that's why I learned the ukulele. I'm like, I can't not play. Right. Right. So even if my band breaks up, I'm getting on a stage somehow. (laughs) Whether I can play it good or not, I'm doing it. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But that's good. 
But That's I've always been like that. You are where you are now. Well, Bar Nancy was a great starting point during that entire, all of 20, the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, because I would test out songs there. Mm-hmm. I didn't care what anybody thought of how I did or how right. I performed it. Even now, I have like a new song I'm working on that I played the other night just to play it. It went okay, but not great. Right. But eventually, it will sound great. I finally got yeah, it memorized. It will. It'll sound and that's, great. you know, I, I got fired from a gig once because I said, oops, and started over. <laughs> Are you kidding? I swear to God, at Gulfstream. You've got to be kidding me. Gulfstream. Gulfstream fired me. They like, she said, oops, she wasn't like that strong of a player. And I was like, you know what? You got a point. I could be wow. better. And that was it. And wow. I moved on from it. I can't even believe that. I love getting fired. It teaches me so many things. <laughs> <laughs> you learn. So who's your dream collaboration? <laughs> I was just thinking how lucky it would be. Like, I've seen all these collabs that happened at a... What's this festival that's happening right now? Sunfest? No, the one that Lizzo and Harry Styles did a collab. Oh, Coachella? Coachella. Yeah, and then I think Billie Eilish did a song with somebody else. She did. I was literally just reading about it four seconds before you came here. Yeah. Who? And I forget my memory. Oh, my God. It's going to drive me nuts. It's somebody appropriate to collab with, but I guess the point is, is, like, it must be nice... To be able to just call, uh, and like Dua Lipa just did some collab song that's on the radio now with Elton John. I, I don't know why that made me actually angry. <laughs> I think it's the jealousy. The jealousy, that's what it I is. I was like, yeah. you got to work with Elton John? <laughs> like, what yeah. the heck? Yeah. Um, you know, dream collab? I don't know. I think it would be really awesome to sit in a room with Lady Gaga and see how she writes. Yeah. Um, she's amazing. Also, I really, I really like, uh, I, I mean, Madonna, really any artist, uh, Alanis Morissette. Oh, she's one of my favorites. Uh, really any nineties artist, yeah. probably a female nineties artist. I would be really open because yeah. stylistically I have a lot of influence from that era. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a lot of influence from my half Jewish heritage. So, um, that comes across in the way I sing. But I don't know who notices that. <laughs> no, when I listened to you for the first time, the name that came to my head was Fiona Apple. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I love her. Yeah, she's awesome. I've been listening to her a lot more lately because my piano you? teacher um, is a really big admirer of her. So every time I play something new, he's like, oh, you know, you should listen to this song from Fiona because it, it has that vibe. And I'm like, and so I've been listening to her a lot more lately. Oh, okay. It's just really funny. I love her. her. Yeah. It's a sign. <laughs> there it is. It is. It is a sign. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So, if there is one thing you could change about the music industry, what would it be? <laughs> I'm sure some people are sick of me saying it, but I hate that it's so. At least not the industry in its entirety, but especially the Miami community and the Miami industry. Um, I wish it wasn't so misogynistic. Yeah. And I wish that there were more more women on stages Mm -hmm. in general, that there were programs to put more women on stages. Because I feel like it's just inconvenient at this point. Like, oh, they were doing a blues festival. Like, why is it so hard to find the female blues players? Yeah. Like, they're there. They're around. They might just not know that opportunity exists. Right. I'll see festivals pop up, and I'm like, how the... Where did they... If I knew that was there, I would have applied for it. Right. Like the podcast from last week, my friend suggested I email these people, and I did it because I knew the opportunity was there that I could apply for. Right. Um, it's just a very buddy buddy like the the closed circle environment. Mm-hmm. There's like the new school and old school. Mm-hmm. I just wish there wasn't just so. I, but it's inequality across the board. I mean, I deal with it at work. I deal with it elsewhere. Yeah. And the music industry is no different. Right. I mean, I. I applied to play at this place or, like, told them what my rate was, and they said I was too expensive when I knew my counterpart made that much, right. if not more. <laughs> right. For the same. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm not too expensive. Right. But thank you. It's not worth it. Right. In that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, it is hard. I remember because I did all the bookings for my daughter's band, and, like, they were so young. And I... To tell them how much they charged, it was like I sometimes couldn't really get it out of my mouth because, but hey, that's what, it, and I'll tell you, they had a following. So it was like, if you want these people to come into your your establishment, you're going to have to pay. So it's good for you standing your ground on that. Yeah, I mean, my fan base, it, and that's the other thing I wish I could change about the Miami audience environment. They're very fair. It's very fair weather. Like a lot of it's based on like, do I have a free night tonight? Like, either you have to have some semblance of celebrity, 
or um, you have to play a type of music that people can just go out dance to have yeah. in the background. Mm -hmm. Like for original music artists, I, I do generally better up north. Okay. And I know that. That's why Alaska was so interesting for me right. because it made me realize how much I probably do need to leave Miami for yeah. my music to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. I hear exactly what you're saying with that. Yeah. I, I, do you do you play much up in Broward or do you stick in Dayton? That's the more? thing. I don't know where to apply to play. Right. Like I had some venues, one closed. I had one I had just, you have to constantly reach out. And I just, I'm doing it myself, yeah. so it gets, like, exhausting right. at, at some point. It mm -hmm. just gets tiring. Yeah. But I have a lot of requests. I actually am playing at Quarter Deck oh, Davy nice. oh. on Wednesday. On University? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. On Wednesday, I'll have to, yeah, we'll have to go out there. If any other musicians are wondering how I got that gig, it's because uh, I was told on the Quarter Deck Instagram to go to the headquarters and pitch myself as a vendor, a vendor, vendor. Oh. <laughs> um, and I showed up, met the owner of all the quarter deck restaurants, and they're like, no, you need to go to each individual location. So I picked one at random. <laughs> wow. And then just said, hey, do you have any openings for a musician? And then there it was. See, not that hard. See, exactly. <laughs> right place, right time. I tell you. It's oh my God. But it's just funny because I this is the guy on the website, like the owner of all the quarter decks. I think even one of the, the Flanagan's people was there. Right. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this this is hilarious contextually because I was awkwardly in the wrong place uh -huh. but gave them my little <laughs> business card picks that I have and um and then went on my merry way and then just picked one yeah because I had very little time to figure it out and I just drove to Davie and then I drove home back to Miami oh you actually drove there to and asked yeah I was oh, wow okay I I'm very adamant yeah. <laughs> the oh, only way good, yeah because hey. well, a phone it? call I, I think I've learned um the best way for anyone to empathize is when they see your face in yeah. person. Yeah. And if somebody wanted me to audition, I would do it, you know, because I think that I, I'm better live. Yeah. I just, but my father always told me the greasy hand gets the oil. So yeah. you got to get out there. It's like, that's awesome though. Thanks. I'm going to come out Wednesday. What time are you? Um, I play from six thirty uh, to nine thirty. Yeah. I have to put it on my, my bassist calendar. My base is actually going to be with me this time around. I'm going to be, I'm going to totally forget. Yeah, put this on my calendar. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm going to be down the street. <laughs> yeah, you are. I can spit there. Okay, <laughs> so today is the 24th. So the 27th. All righty. So right. Alexa Lash at Whopper. If I could spell. <laughs> yeah, it's just me and my bassist. Um, they're really nice there. But that, that's the thing is I found is I'm trying to find, to get out of the community that I'm currently in because mm -hmm. it's, it's not, I'm not going to say it's incestuous, but as soon as one person's in there that, you know, you, you see another 10 yeah. pop up and you're like, oh, I guess everybody knows about this venue now. Yeah. And even if they didn't know about the venues up here, like uh, some people don't want to make the drive. Right. And I'm okay with that. Um, and I think I'm just more appropriate for Broward area. Like the music settles better yeah. with, with up here. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I agree with that. I think, yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. So do you do any like showcases with other bands or have you collaborated with any of the other local bands? Um, you know, I haven't done that so much just because we can't guarantee payment. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not, because I do everything by myself doing like extra promotional stuff is so hard for me. Mm -hmm. Like I have to bank that the people who really like my music will come from wherever they're coming from to come right. see me play. Yeah. Um, those ticketed events are very discouraging because like, I know I'm good. I know my friends want to come out, but if I can't sell tickets, I don't want to feel like I'm not good. Right. Like I, it just means that, you know, I'm an adult female who went through a pandemic and have like four friends. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, I don't have a, like college classes worth of people who will come out because that's all they can do on a yeah. Sunday night, you know, yeah. like, so festival wise, if somebody else puts it together, like I love being on lineups. Um, I do host every third Wednesday of the month now at Bar Nancy wonder woman Wednesdays. And I just had the most amazing night the other night because Nay Rose, who's a violin player, uh, opened and she was fantabulous. Carolina Music, who I'm at, in, at a Broward gig, uh -huh. uh, played as well, and she was amazing. And then I had a caricature artist, her name's Michelle, 
Um, oh, I think I saw that on your Instagram. She was so great. Like, everybody loved her. And it was just this, like, strong female energy in the house. And there was, like, it was just fun. Right. You know, I, I haven't had just fun playing a gig in yeah. a long time. Like, last night was fun, as an example. I've been having more fun on stage. Right. Um, but I get to, I always pick, like, two other female musicians to have come out. I might get a poet soon. Um, I think Michelle's going to come back out and do caricatures in May. Um, so it's going to be exciting. Right. I would tell you my lineup, but I'm confirming it still. <laughs> oh, we'll have to check out your Instagram for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. So do you have, do you go out and check out the local bands? Well, I was working Tuesday nights at Bar Nancy, and that was hosted by uh, another local, Taylor Davis. He had live from the scene. Okay. And it was just a way for me to see other musicians all the time, because, like, I always knew there would be a new set of people every right. every week. Um, but <laughs> as that's closing out, I used to just, I stopped going open mics to perform. Sometimes I'll, if I'll pop in to, like, attend and see what's out there. Um, if a, I know a friend's playing or another local band that I like is playing, I'll go. Like, they have a lot of really good live bands at the Oasis mm -hmm. and Wynwood. Um, and then I try to go to concerts still and stuff. Like, I went to go see Postmodern Jukebox by myself when I got back from Alaska. Mm -hmm. And that was inspiring. Yeah. It was the best version of Creep I've ever heard. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any favorite local bands? Um, well, my lead guitarist is also in a band called Juke which oh, is yeah. headed by Eric Garcia. Yeah, I've heard of Juke. Yeah, he and he's going to have a blues out. Like, that whole group of people, he's been kind of like a mentor, um, Eric. And so I love Juke. Like, I love them. They they jam out. They're, they're amazing. Um, I also really like... Um, there's a couple of people I like, but I'm not sure of everybody's name either. <laughs> That's how I am, too. It's just crazy. I like some of the OG, like, bands. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like um, Uma Galera. Uma Galera. They're, like, reggae. Mm -hmm. um, Afro Beta, who came out of Miami. Like, a lot of the OG bands I really, really like. Another female artist I love is Inez Barlatier, who's been also kind of, like, mentorish in a way. She's just... What I love about her is that... She's taken not just her band and everything, but she does, like, performance art. Mm -hmm. So she's she's been in performances, like, as a singer, um, as an actress. And then she is very true to her roots. And then she's also doing, like, shows. Like, she has this character, Aiti, um, and it's, like, this children's show that okay. they were, that they're putting. She's, she's taking her art, and she's doing a lot of different things with it. And right. she inspires me to want to do new things right, with it. Right. Like I think my dream right now, because I'm I'm recording an EP currently, um, is a piano EP and it has strings on it. Okay. But in the future, um, I would love to collaborate with an orchestra. Oh yeah. And have a performance for that EP release. I see your voice would be perfect for that. Yeah. Oh I saw Bjork play with the orchestra. Oh. I it was so inspiring. I'm like, I can do this. Yeah. I can do that. I want to do that. <laughs> and so now I'm just like really, really motivated to right. have that as something that I do. <laughs> no, I think that your voice would be perfect. A perfect fit for that. Thank you. That would be awesome. <laughs> I, you can, I'm smiling. Cause it just like the thought of it just right. makes me really happy. And I have something really hard to work towards mm -hmm. that I can also look forward to. That would be awesome. <laughs> when are you planning on having the, um, EP, the piano EP out? So it's been tricky to record it, but right now we're doing the arrangements. I have two more arrangements to do with Fernie from The Shack, the place I record and I right. practice and everywhere else in Hialeah. Um, he's helped me through. He helped me with all of my EPs so far, um, but he's a genius and he's helping. Like he does a lot of the arranging with me. I, I like we're working together, but he does a lot of like 99 percent of the work. And I say, oh, I like that or I don't. Right. Um, so it's going to be a, probably a few more months down the road, but I think I'm going to wait till maybe another birthday area release because I want to promote it right this time. Right. right. I feel like I haven't been doing it right. Like I'm yeah. not getting a lot of likes and stuff. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like a, like I just learned new technology. You have a great <laughs> following, so you're doing something right. I, I you know, I, I, try, I don't know how. I wish those people were coming out to things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. So, yeah. So, all right. So we're going to move on to the segment where you can yeah, talk about anything. Yeah, sorry. I talk a lot. No. <laughs> what are you, I talk, You're really easy to talk to. Oh, thank which you. Which is probably why this is doing so well. Anyway, I, she's very nice. So if thank you, you. want to be on this podcast, you should absolutely do it. <laughs> thank you. 
It's also a really cool giraffe. <laughs> Everybody loves the giraffe. Uh, Modern Freaks named a, um, uh, Fiona. That's They named the giraffe oh, nice. Fiona. Yes. Well, I mean, my cousin it, what, was a docent at the Oakland Park Zoo. Okay. In, uh, Oakland, California. Okay. Or the Oakland Zoo. I guess not Oakland. Oakland yeah, I know. The Oakland Zoo. Um, where actually my grandmother's name, cause she collected elephants, uh-huh. um, they made like a fund, uh-huh. the uh, Elaine Lash fund, um, to sponsor people to go to like pay for part of their trip to go do research to better take care of the animals. That's so cool. Speaking of elephants real quick, uh, my mother, when she was a little girl, she yeah. thought she could grow up to be an elephant and that was, that. she always wanted to be an elephant. I want to be an elephant. Yeah. She was like, I, that's the one thing. And she really genuinely thought that she could be an elephant. I think if you dream hard enough, you can be an Yes. Elephant. You're absolutely right. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so people can get to know you. Sure. If I could find them. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's the one thing that you wish everybody would understand about your job as a musician? Um, that's a great question. Um, that it's a lot of work and that my equipment isn't free. <laughs> yeah. Like if I have to bring all my stuff, <laughs> like, yeah. if, and any of it has a chance of breaking, yeah. uh, you need to understand that that, you know, that's why I ask for things like exact pay. like payment. <laughs> like payment. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's definitely the top answer I would have come up with. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I'm not a musician, but I just know from my daughter being a musician because I'm the bank for her yeah. back to what we were saying earlier. Well, so yeah, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Everything, the merch, the, your, your the strings. The, I have way too many everything. guitars, by the it's, way. How many There's someone who doesn't play well comparatively to others who play well (laughs) in my opinion i'm not downgrading myself but i have much to learn um i have okay xan electro mm, the gresh the epiphone this one the alaska guitar is that the one you got signed? Yes. Yes. You saw that picture? Yeah. It was so cool. Oh amazing. my gosh. There's four legislators signatures on that from Alaska. That's awesome. They were, when I walked into the Indian cuisine place I was performing at, I think I think I'm at seven guitars. Wow. And I have two ukuleles because I donated one of guitars over guns. I even donated a guitar to guitar, guitars over wow. guns. So I had more. You still have seven. <laughs> um, and then I have a piano. And I'm going to get another one that's better for like gigging. Right. So I'm going to... It's my... And then I have three amps. Nice. I have a lot of equipment. And, and it's complete. not cheap, everyone. No. It's not. <laughs> it's it is not, not cheap. Oh. It's but I'm cool. done. I'm done for a while. For a little while. Like, I bought the Dan Electro off another musician uh, from mm-hmm. the Mojo Hands. His name's Chris Mullins. Um, another great band, right. by the way. Uh, and, you know, he gives you a good price. So sometimes you get a good deal if your friend is trying to unload some stuff. <laughs> Just be wary yeah. of how much stuff you want to accept from people. <laughs> And you're like, no, I'll never be able to get this again. <laughs> I must have it. It's so much trouble that way. That is funny. Yeah. That is funny. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So what do you wish your younger self knew about your current profession as a musician? Um, I wish she knew that this was actually possible. Because mm-hmm. she might have gone to Berkeley for that. Yeah. <laughs> Classically trained. Right. Um, no, I, I just wish that I was... If I could tell myself something now, like if that I had known, if I had known back then, I would have said, you know, take the risk sooner, mm-hmm. be braver, record everything, and stop getting in your own head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if that answers the question, but. No, it does. And I think I probably had it answered prior because we kind of touched on it about how when you started so late and, you know, yeah. so I was, No, I wish I'd started sooner, but yeah. then again, I'd be a different musician. You would. Maybe I'd sing differently. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. Yeah. I songs would have been, and I'm very. I also have to be very careful about what I write about too. Like I don't, you know, it's okay not to write about everything you're experiencing. Like I write a lot about stuff that's happened to me, but there's some stuff I'll never put into a song, right? Either because it's very personal, or even if I need to deal with those emotions, I find another way to do it. Right. Right. So. Right. Okay. All righty. So if you had ten times the budget you have now, what would you spend it on? Uh, recording my 
next album with my band and being able to pay them fairly for their helping of me. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's the thing is I feel guilty when I can't. When somebody's doing something for me because they love my music, you know, like, it means a lot. And obviously I try to get my band members paid, but even the recording aspect, I mean... It's my music, and they're adding to it, obviously, and we're at we're playing this together. But at the end of the day, you know, they're not as invested as I am right. emotionally. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that they get what they deserve. Right. I also want a reason for them to not have to be, like, to not have to be so busy. Like, I wish if I had all the money in the world, I would h- hire my bandmates full time. Right. I would hire all the lesson givers that could be given to me. I'd promote better because I'd have the money to do music videos properly and not insult an artist by asking for a discount for a friend, which is something I hate doing. You know, any free content I can give, I'm like begging for at this point. Yeah. It's expensive. It is. Everything is very expensive. It's just such an expensive field to be in. It's just nothing's cheap. Nothing. Nothing. All right. All righty. What is something that everybody in your industry should start doing? What should they start doing? Everybody should start being more, uh, not being so much gatekeepers anymore. Like I, I was guilty of it too, probably for a, a bit with Bar Nancy specifically because mm-hmm. I was there for so long. But right, people like harboring venues, yeah. like. Come on, if you know that you're not right for a gig, but you know someone who is, recommend that name, yeah. even if you're not the biggest fan of that person. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's about getting the performance right. Yeah. And those those connections will, like, they'll come back one day. It, yeah, 100%. They will. Because um, mm-hmm. you're not always right for the gig. Yeah. Like, you have to admit that to yourself. Like, if it's a 90s party and you specialize in 50s music, like, don't be that selfish asshole who does like the 90s songs just to get it through. If you yeah. know someone who's excellent at it, recommend them because eventually they will recommend yeah. you for something. That you're, you're absolutely right. For. You're yeah. absolutely right. And that is kind of along the line of why I started this podcast other than being bored because my daughter's <laughs> band went on hiatus. But it was <laughs> like... There's so many good bands like you out there that... Does she get mad that you talk about her so much on the podcast? (laughs) She's just like, Mom, shut up. (laughs) But it's like, I was so involved in that band because I was like the... I was the manager. I did all the booking, everything. It kept me very busy alongside everything else I do. So, but I was like, I would go out to all the shows and I would meet all these other bands and there were so many that were so good. And I'm like... I don't understand how these bands have not been, how am I just hearing of you guys? Yeah. So that was an, it was like, you know what, anybody that I can help in any format way, whatever that's, I would love to see someone that I have had on this couch be fat, like just make it partially like something, you know, I and I'm confident everybody that I've had has the ability and the talent to do it. It's just like a matter oh, of the right I know. I've seen some of the names on your podcast. Like I'm, I think some of them are going to get there. Uh, they have some notoriety in Miami. Yeah. Like yeah. I think creature cage is one yeah, of the them. Creature cage. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. forget who the other one was that I saw that you had. Um, probably super Bowl. Yes. Super yes. Bowl. Yeah. They're my, my, my old drummer was like a huge fan of their band. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've heard them before. They're really good. Yeah. They're and, very good. They're very talented. And just like you, like they put the work in. It's like, so it's, it's bound to pay off sooner or later. I would hope. I hope so. I would hope. I just need to get Miami new times to like vote me as something. <laughs> I just need to meet the right people. <laughs> it's true. That's what it is. It's the, who you meet. Like, I just hope my name just is said so many times that it annoys somebody so much mm-hmm. that they're like, I have to yeah. check it out. Yeah. I actually true. bought these stickers, which like, I don't know if I should tell everybody my secrets, but they're literally just my QR code and it says uh-huh. your next favorite musician. And I'm going to start like pasting them random Me places too. because I think that the curiosity gets people. Yeah. I would totally be like, huh, what is Let this? Just, Hold on. Take a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. So that's my, I'm trying, I'm trying new things to like get people yeah. to find me. Yeah. I, no, I don't know. It's definitely. If, but- if anybody has a suggestion as to like how I can do better. I always take them. Well, you have a really good following, but the only thing, the only suggestion I give to anybody, not just you, but anybody, is just to go out, meet the different bands and 
once you start to like everybody's going to start to like oh let's lash yeah oh yeah i met her this and that and that's just that's just how i feel like and then slowly make i mean i've had people i had a band from new jersey california reach out to me i'm like how do you even know about me because you know, you're getting out that's and you're that's great. the thing about <laughs> things but that's the and then i'm hopefully people will be like oh yeah i saw them on you know stage mom and stuff like that so it's like you're also putting together things like, yeah i yeah. found you because of i think the gramps show that you're putting together is it gramps no or it's over at lauder ale okay that's what yeah. it was yeah who did i think that was doing the other one anyway i saw you were putting a show together yeah. and that's like there are people that i follow so right. i was like oh my god like that's really cool yeah that she's doing this for the local scene yeah yeah i would I, I just would love to see someone be found i would love that i'd be like oh my god well you know like my little children <laughs> <laughs> And the winner, the fan favorite of my mini fest that I've got going on, there's 16 bands. Um, they play Revolution Live for the next Ripple Effect. So that's very amazing. excited about that. And it's like, again, my daughter, if it wasn't for the Ripple Effect, her band played there three times through the Ripple Effect. They would never in a million years have ever had the opportunity to play Revolution Live. So I'm super excited that I have become a part of that to where I can offer that to somebody because it's an opportunity that doesn't come up every day you know and it's and it's like a huge thing for your resume it's a huge thing just to be, say oh my god i played a revolution life so i would love to know. one day i played the seminal theater which was really cool oh that's awesome and that that was a ripple effect on its own because that started because i did something called the gong show mm -hmm. so my old bandmate johan um told me because he's like it's tonight alexa and it was down the street from my apartment He's like, you should go to this thing. You should just go. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up. I did it. Uh, met Gabby, uh, who was helping to run it. She was hosting and, and part of this whole Miami community. And then she recommended me for a gig in Homestead. Mm -hmm. The photographer <laughs> from the Homestead gig, mind you, I played this by myself. I barely was playing guitar at this time. Um, remembered my name wow. <laughs> for like several years and then told his wife about me uh, and then that person contacted me through HCA Homestead Center for the Arts and they respond they wanted to sponsor a musician to play at Seminole Theater that's awesome. so like literally like like yeah. boom 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 yeah. boom boom you just never know you, you never no know <laughs> you don't know who's watching you you don't know yeah. who's paying attention yeah at all exactly you don't it's just it's the, and that's how it is right place right time you always want to make sure you're everywhere you can be well that's the other thing uh, about telling myself something in the future like even if your audience is small you might just have the right person in the yeah. audience the yeah. person who books at all the hotels in south yeah. Florida. you have no, no idea, idea who is in that audience so yeah. just because the the room is is somewhat empty does not mean yep. you should play any less 100 percent. yeah yeah, yeah. At least, and you know that, so that's good. I got paid hundred dollars to pay zo play zombie last night. I just want to put that out there. Somebody paid you hundred dollars <laughs> to play zombie. I I have this. So Bar Nancy, like low key, all the owners hate that song. Uh huh. Because they've heard it so many times uh -huh. from every female singer who walks through that door. Right. And they're like, Alexa, you're the only one that we actually like who plays it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and they're like, but please, like, learn other covers, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> like. And then so last night. I, we were finishing up our set and some guy, I was like, oh, if anybody ever has any requests, let us know. And somebody was like, play zombie. And I was like, sir, I cannot play that song in this establishment. <laughs> He's like, would you do it for a hundred dollars? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> so that was really cool. And then, um, yeah, but those, the people who came out, I, I, I just love that because it just, it ended up being such a fun night because yeah. none of us really cared and we were just like having a great time on stage and like we played a really great show even though the room wasn't packed. It was like, like normal full. Right. Yeah. Like we just had a blast. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I just And uh, money, but it is. It's, <laughs> of course. It's all about. Well, $100 to play, play the pay. bane of my, the existence of my owner, like the bar owners. Like, <laughs> it's just hilarious. I'm like, it just shows you how much people love certain music and certain musicians. And like I, 90s style, like, sir, I know that one by heart. <laughs> like, I know all the lyrics to Zombie. Yep. So that's great. <laughs> Didn't need to look that up. 90s had the best music. I just, this really great era for singer songwriters yeah and when anybody sure. asks me what kind of music i play now my answer is if you like 90s music from female singer songwriters you'll like me yeah that's just, what yeah I yeah it's pretty that. accurate 
It is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. That's what I've been telling. I should have answered that first when you asked yeah. me what kind of music I play. Yeah, we snuck it in now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, do you have a significant other? I do not. Okay. Single. What up? <laughs> <laughs> if you were to write a book, what would it be about? Um, you know, I've always wanted to write a children's book. Oh, uh, nice. About, um. Uh, a pterodactyl oh <laughs> um where it was teaching you about the words that start with pt <laughs> i know that sounds ridiculous what words do start with pt pterodactyl pterodactyl starts with pt i think so did i just spell it wrong see this is why I need this book <laughs> this we need that how do you spell pterodactyl it's p-t-e-r <laughs> we're gonna find out <laughs> now you made me doubt how do you myself spell pterodactyl <laughs> It is. It's PT. Yeah, yeah. So it was gonna be like a like a fun wordplay book. I know that's ridiculous. I never actually said this out loud to anybody other than my friend Sherry. Um, but I was really big on wanting to write like a, a children's like poetry like right. rhyming book. There are so many words that start with PT. Yeah. I would not even know how to tell you to pronounce. I mean, them. they're they're like. I thought it would be cute to like have them do words that start with T, but she spells everything with a P. Right. And they're they're like. You know that is such a cute Terry the pterodactyl like like that's wrong you you can't spell it with a p you have to do this <laughs> i need an illustrator <laughs> that would be that is awesome anyway, i never wrote i never wrote the thing but it was something i talked about with my friend i, I thought it was like a great idea for a children's book right all right so she needs an illustrator guys okay <laughs> comment down below whatever they do with the little videos that my youngest daughter watches all i hear all day long Just comment down below <laughs> Button. Comment down below. <laughs> I know that that was probably not the normal answer, but like <laughs> that's like <that's> <laughs> specific. <laughs> that is like one of the best book ideas I've ever heard of. It's like Thank it'll you. teach children too. Yeah, it's, it's like I love that educational yes. divide. Um, and my daughter, my youngest, loves dinosaurs. So oh, I have a huge fascination with T Rex. There's no, there's no like. I don't know the history or the bone size or whatever of a T-Rex. I just, I used to follow this meme account called T-Rex trying. Uh -huh. And I think the whole like little arms <laughs> thing, it just makes me laugh so hard. My, my wallet is actually, um, my friend got it for me as a gift. It's, it's dinosaur. Uh -huh. Um, I have this like weird fascination. Like I don't even know historically. I just know that pterodactyl starts with PT and, uh, <laughs> That I like T-Rexes because they have tiny little arms, and I think it's funny to think about them grabbing things. <laughs> I have a I have a shirt that it's like um, it's a T-Rex with like one of those extended hand things. Oh yes, with the claws. The claws. <laughs> and I just think it's the cat's pajamas. That is so funny. Oh, that, that is funny. Yeah. That is that's, that's. I'm easy funny. to buy gifts for, but then it gets annoying because like I don't want gifts. I don't always want you know the pterodactyls or the, the, the T-Rexes. Yeah. Thing. Like it gets, it's, it's, it's <laughs> that, people should just give me money for gifts. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy whatever suits me. All right. Birthday's November 11th. Yes. Money. Money. We'll, we'll, we'll put your Venmo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So if you could sit down with one famous person in the past or the present for one hour, who would it be and why? Oh my gosh. Hi. I don't know why this is the first name that comes to mind right now, but Stevie Wonder. Oh, okay. Because I've been listening to like his stuff also lately. Right. He's so prolific. Yeah. He Everything's is. a hit. Yes. Everything. Everything. Yep. And he's so talented. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's there's so many probably so many people I'd want to sit in mm -hmm. a room with, but I I don't know why his name came to mind first. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. I, right. I guess Stevie that's the Wonder. answer. Yeah. All right. So. Thanks. What songs have you written about significant others, if any? You know which ones are about you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, well, the best story is not really a significant other. It was someone who was significant and is other. But uh -huh. I, uh, She's Gonna Be Fine was about a story, like a true story that happened. Like the song okay. from start to finish is about exactly the scenario that happened. I met a guy on an open mic night in California. I was, it was during the pandemic period. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, had been by myself in my house and hadn't left. And I wrote, like, he came and visited. We had a great time. And then he left and, like, tried to ghost me. We're friends now. Right. Like, 
I'm sure he's sick of hearing this story or like doesn't even acknowledge it anymore. But, um, <laughs> but like I wrote what happened right. in the song. Like okay. the whole song is what happened. Um, I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's on, it's online. Uh-huh. Um, but it's literally like the, the first lines are girl meets guy, a guy flies to see her. Spent his time so excited and she was so damn scared because it's not like she was ready for someone new. Um, So it's like, and it it just goes through the story. I can't wait to listen. It's exactly as it happened. There's no, there's no bells or whistles. There's no disguising and there's no um, argument on who it's about. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And Sunrise actually was written the same weekend. Okay. No. Because I love weekend, that song. Sometimes. Same weekend that person was visiting. Okay. They were sleeping, and I was outside on my balcony thinking about the fact that they were about to leave. Uh-huh. And so I wrote Sunrise. Oh, okay. Um, my song MIA is about someone I used to be in love with who lived in New York. Um, that whole era of November, May was about this person I would like I had in my life. Like, he was an inspiration for a lot. Right. Um, but... The other stuff is like a combination of right. scenarios. I wrote a song called Ghost Boy because I've been ghosted by multiple people, mm-hmm. um, which sucks. Yeah, they're lost. Um, I wrote, um, I think I Love You was inspired by somebody I was dating. Um, they knew that, though. But the, the thing I hate the most, though, which was happened to me recently, is somebody telling me, like, oh, just go write a song about it. Like, as if that's, like, I'm going to Taylor Swift it up, and that's, like, a natural progression of the thing that I do. I don't always do that, Right. number one. There's people I haven't written about. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the audacity to tell me how to perform my art yeah. is uh, very annoying. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, it's I an, get that. As if it's an insult for me to write a successful song based on mm-hmm. something that may or may not have happened with you or others. Right. I also had a, an ex who... I wrote a song, <laughs> if he ever listens to this, this would be hilarious. <laughs> Sagittarius, actually. <laughs> so you don't know who you are. <laughs> um, that's fine. I don't care. It's been long enough. But I wrote a song, a happy song, about, like, it's called, uh, oh my gosh, wow, how did it go? I wrote it on the ukulele, and it's like, I'm in love with you. And I wrote all these things about how happy this person makes me. Mm-hmm. To write the song, I had to channel all of the things that person never did. Oh, my gosh. So when, so when I used to sing it, they thought it was, like, this beautiful song written about them. And it was lies. It was, it was, it was lies yeah. because that person was emotionally abusive. It was wow. emotionally abusive. I feel like women get... It happens and vice versa. We're seeing it now with, like, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp thing. Yeah. But, like, it does happen in reverse. But more often than not, the people yep. who are getting gaslit are women. Yep. In their jobs and everything else. And people who are strong, I consider myself a very strong-headed person, mm-hmm. can still get taken accidentally down with the right amount of pushing at the right buttons. Mm-hmm. If you know that that person's afraid of being alone, that's the button you push. If, you're, yeah. if you know that that person is terrified as all hell, that they are going, that they're not making the right choices, you push on that button. Yeah. And, you know, that person was very good at pushing the right yeah. buttons and i almost lost myself like i had a my friend dita's the one who helped pull me out of that at the very end like i as soon as that person told me that i needed to change my priorities away from music oh. that was that was the kicker yeah to think that that person wanted to take this away from me right. is still shocking right and then even after the breakup they said don't you think it would be a good idea to retire a song once it you know once that just to hold on to the memory of what it meant to you and that other was person. jealous of you? I don't know. But that person like was talking thing. about that song. Oh. Well, I that new song. They're like, do you think it's time to retire the song? I'm like, I'm never going to retire that song because it's hilarious. <laughs> For so many What's reasons. The name of that song? I'm in love with you. Oh, should have been um, named Lies. It's a... Uh, it's like... It's a really cute ukulele song. Like, yeah. if you had a ukulele here, I would play it for you. I... It's one. It's a fan a favorite from the people from that era. Have you ukulele? Oh, you do. Yeah. Do we have? Okay. Sorry. I have to go into the dungeon with my dog. Oh, no worries. This is great. Okay. Fiona's cool. 
She'll look back on this and know I'm talking to Drev. But you would know better than me. Well, only one way to find out. Yeah, it's ginger. Okay. I think my ear is questionable sometimes. I wish I knew how to tune a guitar by ear. because you know the now i know the story yes <laughs> so funny that i once funny. sang it with commentary so like i was like a lot of people <laughs> and my friend thought that was part of the song but i was explaining why the song was a lie right. while i was playing it for them uh-huh. and i think i might do that version because it's funnier that is but... funny that is yeah. funny thank you i love that <laughs> that's funny and you're a great ukulele player thank you yeah uh, there's a lot of chords i don't know but i actually wrote this song my, I guess my most popular song with locals is mm-hmm. called MIA. Okay. I wrote it on, on the ukulele. Okay. okay. It's like, is it, I don't even know how to play a, an E anymore, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's been a while. I don't know how to do it. Nope. <laughs> I forgot how to play an E minor. On Pull the- it up on Spotify, guys. <laughs> there you go. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible musician. I'm kidding. But yeah, if I remembered how to do it. And then it became a band song. That was the first song coming full circle that I played on guitar at a gig. Okay. Um, 
and then now I just I played it. Now there's going to be a piano version of it with strings on that new EP that's going to come out. Okay. So the evolution awesome. of MIA has been very interesting. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. People sing along to it. It shows. It's very. Oh, cool. that must make you feel so good. It does. Okay. That would be awesome. Like, Amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. It's the best feeling ever when my yeah. lyrics are saying back to me. Oh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Not. So, what is it that you would want your fans to remember about you? Um, I want them to remember my voice. Mm -hmm. And the lyric thing is big. Like, that's like a dream of mine is, is not necessarily celebrity so much as just like having a large portion of people who know my stuff. Right, right. Like being at a venue with like a lot of people at it. And they're just singing along. Right, right. Lighters in hand. <laughs> Maybe not lighters anymore. I don't know if you can bring those and in the, the venues, phone, but the cell, cell phone, phone flashlights. flashlights. Yes. yes. Um, I almost died the first show I went to when they said, pull out your cell phones, put your flashlights on. I'm like, well, is this like the lighter version of the yeah. 2000s? What the heck? I remember back in the day, the Y100 Jingle Ball. Yes. Uh, people were still using lighters back yeah. then, I think. Yeah. Now everybody's got a phone. Yep, they do. Yeah. Even the eight-year-olds. Yes, crazy. I was I put off having a phone for as long as humanly possible. Oh, really? Until my parents were like, "You need one when you go out, so yeah, we can true. contact you." It's I'm true. But like, I but anonymity, anonymity. <laughs> I was like, I don't want you to know where I am. That's so funny. That is so funny. So, do you have any other hobbies outside of music? Um, for a while, I was. I mean, I'm in a book club, but I haven't been oh, okay. to book club in so long that I don't even know if I'm still a member. So please <laughs> tell me if I am. Um, I did help start it though. So I want to say like, I'm a PERMA member by you, but think so. so. Um, but I used to, I used to love to read, but I also like, uh, I still write poetry. Mm -hmm. I post it on my Facebook and it gets emotional and people comment on it, but it's fine. Um, what else do I like to do for a while? Was, I, I like to play sports. I just haven't okay. done it in a while. Like I definitely need to get back to the gym, but that's not very inspiring. Like I love to dance. Mm -hmm. uh, I took salsa lessons at UCF. I always wanted to take salsa lessons. I'm actually I just have no rhythm. That's a pretty I'm good doing. dancer, I think. I, I mean, I'm told that I dance like a white girl, whatever that means. <laughs> like I know I do. I guess an insult. Like I'm an excellent dancer, guys. I'm um, not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do the chair dancing. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I do. Um, I you know I played softball and mm -hmm. uh, I. I have a bowling ball. I'm not okay. very good anymore, but I do enjoy competitive sports. Yeah. But once that starts, I mean, there's no going back. Then I'm like, I'm winning this. Uh -huh. And you start betting things. <laughs> yeah, um, right. And then I, I like, like, I like writing. I just really like writing in right. general. Okay. Not long form, short form, but mm -hmm. writing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think those are my hobbies. Okay. My life is very much my jobs now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you spend most of your life doing it. That's yeah. It's... yeah. All right. So we're going to do rapid fire. Oof. Okay. Do I have to answer rapidly? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, we're Oof. supposed to. Yes, yes, yes. A I'll, lot I'll of my, do my questions best. do have a lot of reasons or okay. opportunity. For, all right. So what celebrity annoys you the most? Uh, oh my God. What's his name? Pete Davidson. Oh, really? Does he? Okay. Yeah, I don't know I if that's that. true, but it's rapid fire, and I think it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Would you date a fan? Uh, terrible idea. Yeah, it is a terrible idea. Nickname your family used to call you. Um, can I do one? Do they still call me? Because yeah. my mom still calls me Buttercup. Okay. She also calls me every other, like, sweet item, like, in text messages. <laughs> like, hello, my little cupcake. Hello, my oh, little chocolate good. donut. Oh. Like, she... <laughs> Sometimes she gets uh, sassy and calls me her little like taco or burrito. She goes, she goes Latin food on me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's funny. Okay, who do you text the most? Uh, it's a mix between Dita, um, my group chat with my dad and stepmom uh -huh. side of the family, the group chat with my mom and my older brother and his fiance, and then um, Johan. The four. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm the band. If you could speak another language other than the ones you speak, what would it be? Uh, oh my gosh. I'd love to learn French because I think it would be really good to sing songs in French. Oh yeah, true. Like, I, I speak enough Spanish, I think that that wouldn't count as right. something I'd want to get fluent at. But, um, also German. Really interested in German. I wonder how hard it would be. I only know one word, which is Ausgezeichnet, which means awesome. 
Okay, yeah, that's just way too in depth for me. There's no way I would ever be able to do German ever, <laughs> ever. All right, what is the one thing you regret spending money on? No regrets. Okay. Good, good answer. I'm just kidding. I'm probably giving back money to someone who didn't deserve it. That was a waste of my money. Okay. <laughs> so I find this funny because you brought her up earlier, but fill in the blank. Taylor Swift is a wonderful songwriter. She is. Yeah. She's a good I'm not going to diss her. She's you a know? good storyteller. She's made success out of, she sure she, I think she won a Guinness world record for having the most like self-written album or something. She's a great songwriter. Like She's people amazing. who diss her, like at least she makes her own stuff. Like some real. people have a team, like me and other people's stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love Dua Lipa, but I watched an episode of them writing the song and there's like 10 people in that room. Yeah. I'm like, wait, you can have 10 people in a room writing a song? <laughs> wait, people people get paid to do this? Like, you don't actually yeah. have to write your music? It's crazy. Yeah. Like, really great music, by the way. But, yeah. like, you know, it's just interesting that people judge certain people mm -hmm. by one thing or another. Yep. Yeah. It's funny because I get so, so many different answers to that question. But it's yeah. like, I love Taylor Swift. My daughter loves Taylor Swift. Like, I, both my daughters do. She, I think she's an incredible storyteller. And she just leaves it out there like she's not fake yeah i mean she started i remember her when she was a country music star mm -hmm. i was an undergrad mm -hmm. like and yep. she changed her she became like this powerhouse like i respect it yeah, me too and that's the thing about celebrity and i was talking about that the other day with someone people feel like they have a right to like your personal life and to scrutinize you mm -hmm. just because you're a public figure yeah. Like, they're like, Alexa, why would you want to be a celebrity? I was like, I want to just know what it's like for two seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, if I fall off the face of the planet, I don't need to do all that work to maintain the celebrity. Right? <laughs> but I want to know what it feels like to, like, touch so many lives. Mm -hmm. But the, true. the downside is always that criticism it's that true. you're going to get. Like, Jesus. Like, some yeah. people are mean. There are some real mean people People are mean there. now. Like, I'm not yeah. even anywhere near it. But the stuff I hear, like, about my personality or my songwriting, like, I'm less like, like, ugh. Like, don't be mean. That's <laughs> true. What's wrong There's with you? so many mean people out there. They're jealous. That's what it is. Yeah. Hater is going to hate. They are. Haters Drinking that hate, 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 hate. Exactly. <laughs> Drinking that hater aid. So much of it. So much in the Miami water. <laughs> so true. All right. What do you impulse buy most often at the store? <laughs> <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> um, Impulse buy. I, I impulse purchase not at the store necessarily, but like online. Yes. Jeans from American Eagle. If you've never tried their jeans, they're excellent. Yes, they are excellent jeans. <laughs> um, I, I do that a lot. I also impulse buy like random things on Amazon in I general. Oh, their clothes are actually really good. They are. And I'll tell you, I couldn't tell I hate going to the mall now. I am such, I'm so addicted to online shopping. It's like the package shows up once every other day at my house. I bought this as an impulse buy online because I just loved it so much. Yeah, it's cute. Weird, Weird is, cool. is cool. Yeah, it's cute. I... All right. Name one person that inspires you. My grandmother. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Name a song that makes you happy. Um, because I'm happy. I'm, I always I'm sorry. think of that and one. I, yeah, of course. I always think of that one. It yep. just, it does. I like anything that kind of has an upbeat. Yeah. That makes you want to go like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can't help but move. Do the chair dance. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Do you like to sleep in or take naps? <laughs> naps. Okay. All right. So what are your future goals? What's next for you? On the the, the, the piano and string EP. Okay. And then figuring out how to properly promote that. And probably finding a manager and an assistant. <laughs> okay. I need help. Okay. I'm doing too much by myself yeah. and it's overwhelming and I, it, it keeps me from doing things the correct way. Mm -hmm. you know? And you work. Yeah. Hey, look, you got yourself a gig all the way in the quarter deck. I mean. Yeah. Just cause I had a Monday off. Yeah. I was like, it was vendor Monday or something, whatever day it was mm -hmm. vendor pitching day, whatever day that was. But if anybody's ever wondering how I got gigs, I know you didn't ask this question necessarily. It's a good, a good for point. anybody wondering how I did it. Um, <laughs> At least one of the things that I did, I created a stock email, number one, that has my links. I did a link tree that I consider more effective than an EPK because I basically, okay. electronic press kit, if you don't know what that means. I know it's for like a one pager, but I find it much easier to use link tree. Mm -hmm. um, I put a stock email together, description of the band, description of who I am, basically copying from an EPK format with like who, 
what my genre is, like how many members of the band and all of that detailed information. I put my logos and everything in there mm -hmm. and I include like a video to link to so they could see me play. Okay. Um, everything's about content. Yep. But the second thing that I started doing was reaching out to um, venues on Instagram saying, hey, I'm a local singer songwriter. Do you have an email where I can send my materials for consideration? Okay. And then that stock email, I modify it to whatever venue and then I send it. And um, I've gotten a lot of gigs this way. Yeah. Yeah. It's process, very process driven and it works, which is why I say like to my friends who live, especially who live in Broward, if you know a venue that is looking for music, for bands, you need to let me know. Right. Like you tell me what, whatever their thing is and I'll reach out to them on Instagram. It's just that I don't have the bandwidth, <laughs> pardon the pun, bandwidth <laughs> to, um, to know or to research or to find the right, whatever. Right. So that's, that's where I'm at. Right. Okay. But yeah. So do you got? Do you have any merch? I do stickers. Okay, I do. I have shirts. I was gonna bring you one, and I like forgot as Aww. I was like running through the door. Um, but I have uh, I have two. I have three uh, styles of T-shirt. I have a band shirt, which is Alexa and the Old Fashions, and then uh, two lo Alexa Lash logo T-shirts. Okay. Um, and then I started making those earrings. Instagram. But earrings, really? So this is the story behind that. I have these like pick um, business cards, which right. I can give you one, but um, they're real picks. They're usable Super and they're cool. good quality. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I messed up because you can't see the QR code on the ones I just ordered. Oh. So in my ingenuity, I decided to turn them into pick earrings. Oh, so how cute is I, that? So far, I think I've made like 10 or 11 pairs. Oh, I love that. that. I'm going to start selling, I think, at my next. That's I have to get a display for it, yeah. though. Yeah. That's the thing about needing an assistant. Like at gigs and stuff, selling shirts. Yeah. Like, I don't have anyone to run a merch table yeah, for me. It's hard. And how, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to pay them for the gig that I'm barely <laughs> like making it by. Right, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. It is. Talking about money is also exhausting and a very sensitive subject. Yeah, it's true. With everyone. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Okay. So, and they, ha there's a link on your Instagram to, I don't sell them online yet. I've you just been okay. selling them at gigs. Okay. I, I know. That's the thing is having an e-commerce site or something that will be me going and having to ship them. So I just yeah. haven't, it's just on the docket, but not a priority yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what is your Instagram and where can everybody find you? Oh, Alexa Lash Music on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else. It's A-L-E-X-A -E like Amazon and Lash like your eye music. Okay. Is there anything else you want to let everybody know about you or um, have you looked at? I'm wonderful. Yes, she is wonderful. <laughs> it's been really nice talking to you. It's I been really enjoyed, nice. I really have enjoyed it. Oh, I had so much fun. Like, I I love talking about art. Yeah. It's like the best thing I just, in the world. Yeah. It makes me so happy. It's cool that you do this. Like, it's cool that local bands inspire you, that your daughter inspires you. Mm -hmm. Like, my mom would probably love you. Aw. Like, she went to all my shows, yep. even the ones in Miami, and she lives in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And as soon as I, like, started having a lot of shows. She's like, Alexa, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. My know. daughter my probably part. would have loved for me to have not gone to shows, Aww. but she was also younger, you know, so she's, you know, it's I mean, all about image. There's the mother. <laughs> well, I couldn't, I couldn't, my mom, I have a hot mom. I'll say it. Like she makes me look good at shows. <laughs> Bring all your friends, mom. Bring all your friends to my shows, yes, please. That's awesome. Yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so it's been so nice. It's been really nice. And, um, all right, Alexa Lash, thank you so much. Thank you. This was a blast. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine, I swear. My ego's bruised, but that's a pain I can bear. I never knew how much you may be here. I made a guess that there was something there.